Alrighty, everybody, welcome back once again to Adam, your dog trainer. It's been a hot minute since I've been around, and I forgot to mute the phone. Look at that, and the fun always begins as soon as the phone starts. So anyway, so phone is muted. We are ready. If this is your first time watching, please go ahead, smash that subscribe button you see down there. Give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit the little notification icon, the little bell because that will tell you when we go live and when I update things on Friday and Wednesday and Thursday and all the videos that we're going to be putting into the next couple weeks. In two weeks, we have Global Pet Expo coming to Orlando, which is the world's largest pet expo for buyers and sellers. And so it's going to be a Trevor Trove. Trevor Trove? Uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be huge, basically. It's going to be huge. Uh, those of you in the chat, let me know how you're doing. If it's your first time watching and you haven't have never joined us, all you have to do is take your phone and open up the app and then go all the way down to the bottom and you'll see where it says chat. Uh, you go ahead into the chat and you can type away. Uh, it is monitored, so we have people here watching and keeping track of what you say. So if you have any questions, they'll answer your questions or I will try to do my very best. Um, so first and foremost... Today, we are talking about tug toys. Are they good? Are they bad? What do you think? What do you see? Um, are they good for training or are they not good for training? Um, first of all, uh, I do want to thank uh, some one of our local uh, sponsors here. They uh, gave us kindly. I have uh, this little guy right here. Peace, love, and dog. Uh, dog. Yeah, that way, dog. Um, so I have that. Um, hey, Rachel. Um, and I also have a slew of other, of other ones. So this one is, yep, that's pretty funny. Um, and they donated all of these to, to me for the wall here. So as I told you, we have things going for the set. Here's another one. Um, love that one. That's a good one. Um, this one's a good one too. The lighting might be a little off. That one's pretty funny. Uh, so there's that. So I have about 10 of these. Um, all guests must be approved by my dog. That's hysterical. Love that one. Um, so all different kinds. And, you know, as you know, I don't make a lot of money. And so I, I you know, I went to the shop. And they, I talked to them about our channel and what we do here. And so they sent me this one too. Uh, the lighting's going to be really awkward on this one. Um, so they, they got me this one too. And so we're going to put these all over the wall behind me. I'm going to be redoing the pictures. Like I told you guys initially I was going to do. Going to redo all the pictures. And then um, I'm going to hang these around the wall. And then we are moving the studio 90 degrees so we're gonna be facing the wall now which is going to be really really cool all right so that's kind of what's going to be happening that's it you know and then we're done um i built a contraption i don't know if you guys saw the pet alert video i did and posted on friday but i built a a, a, a contraption thing that i can do a hands up closey you know that actually looks kind of legit um I, I i can't lie that 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 came out this little 90 degree turn with a bookshelf and white gotta love ikea white scraps of wood couldn't have done any better you know so who do we got here we got ozzy is chilling in the chat rachel's in the chat Teresa's in the chat eric is in the chat we got a good chat room today uh so yeah so let's talk about pull toys now some people think it's okay to play with like a rope and it's okay to like tug of war and, you know, play with your dogs and, and engage your dogs. Now, you guys know, I always talk about physical, mental, emotional, and social stimulation. Okay. And that is a form of physical stimulation. Yes, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But you are still, on top of everything else, teaching your dog a behavior. You have to remember that. Everything you do between the age of, you know, eight weeks old till you can get them till a year, you're teaching them a behavior. 
the question is, what behavior are you truly teaching them? All right. Um, it's really weird because I can see myself in another video on the chat window on the big monitor. It's really bothering me. I'm going to close that off. <laughs> but I can see it. We're live. So that's good. Um, so, yeah. So what are you what do you think you're teaching those of you in the chat? What do you think you're teaching your dog? By playing tug of war with a rope or a pull toy or something along those lines. And while we're doing that, while you guys are thinking about that, I'm going to go into Google and find out what the best, I'm going to go to Amazon and find out what the best pull toys on the market today are. So I'm just going to go here and go pet supplies and just type in tug toy. Tug toy for war dogs? Just tug toy, yeah. And we're going to see what pops up here. So best tug toy. Do, 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 do. Teach him aggression, Ozzy. I don't know. That's a good guess, though. Wow, that thing's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but it's not um, aggression. Ozzy says aggression. Anyone else have any ideas what we're teaching? If if we're teaching anything, what are we teaching our dogs when we're doing uh, using a tug toy? Ozzy says aggression. And the, what is this? West Paws. Uh, Cherise says nipping. Uh, so mouthing, yeah, that, that could be another one. So the number one on Amazon that has 1,855 four stars or above customer reviews is the, wow, that thing's pretty cool. West Paws Design, the, um, I wish I can share my screen with you, but I can't because I don't have it hooked up. Uh, Rachel says not to let it go. Um, so this says West Paws Zufa or Zugo Flex toy, and it's an interactive toy. It floats. It's 100% guaranteed for medium chewers. Okay. Um, it looks kind of like an S. It's like an S, and you hold one end and the dog holds the other, and you're pulling. Um, so what are you teaching your dog? You're actually teaching your dog to minimize that screen. You're actually teaching your dog to, um, to kind of one to use their mouth will benefit them. You're teaching them that a mouth is a tool. It's an object that they can learn that they can use as something. What that may be. I don't know. Two, you are engaging that biting you're engaging that biting that and tugging. So, um, Rachel, I'm going to say, or who said it? Uh, Ozzy said it. Ozzy said you're, you're said aggression. And I'm not going to say aggression, but I'm going to say you're raising uh, a level of your dog's energy because what do they start doing? Usually they start growling and they start flailing around. And, you know, I kind of don't want that because when the dog is doing that with my hands, you know, just imagine if I had a child and they can, you know, and I'm, my and my child goes and plays with that. And then that could lead to some pretty bad things. What if you have a dog playing with a toy, uh, their own toy, and now the dog comes over and wants to, and goes and grabs it out of their hand. They could nip the child in the hand. You know, you're teaching your dog aggressive play. I guess the best way to put it. Um, Erica says she has clients who love that toy and it looks pretty good. It looks pretty durable. I don't doubt that part of it. Um, but I would say for anybody with a dog between eight weeks old and a year old, that's not a game you want to teach them. You just don't, you don't want to engage them on that conversation. You don't want to teach them that playing with that kind of tool or toy is a smart thing, you know? It's not a smart thing. Um, you know, you teach your dogs certain things. So when you're in that position and you're, you're, man, I got a bug flying around here. You're in that position and you're holding this up and your dog is lunging at you, trying to get this, this, this object. What, what are you teaching them? One, I would say Ozzy's right. You're teaching aggression. Christy, uh, Sharice is right. You're teaching them nipping. 
Uh, Rachel was right. You're teaching them not to let it go. You know, it's all of those. You're all teaching. You're all correct on the behaviors that we're talking about. You guys, you're, you're, I would say every single one of you is correct because what are you ultimately teaching your dog? You're teaching them to, <laughs> to lunge at your hands and go after things like this. This is the towel I use to clean my camera lenses. And, and so, you know, if I'm sitting here cleaning my, my expensive DSLR camera and I have a really high-end lens, do I want my dog jumping at this? No, of course not. Um, at work, when we clean the ferret cages, we use blue rags. And we have ferrets beating up the blue rags all the time. So, uh, you know, what do, what, do we, what do we do? What do we see? A negative behavior out of the ferrets because they bite our hands. So we don't use blue rags with ferrets anymore because it teaches them bad behaviors. And the people at work kind of hate me because I yell at them for it. But it's true. When you don't clean the ferret cage with a blue rag, you don't get a negative behavior. They learn not to go after your hands. You're getting rid of the game. Does that make sense? Yeah. I believe so. It does. All right. So let me go here real quick. Um, I haven't done this in a while, but I received an awesome email from someone in Las Vegas. And her name is Debbie. And let me go ahead and pull this up. Where are you? Click, click, click. There you are. Um, here it is. Debbie lives in Las Vegas, and she is a dog trainer uh, with one of the big box stores. I don't want to say the name, as you guys know, I usually don't. Uh, but she works with one of those big box stores. And she says, uh, Dear Adam, your dog trainer, I am so impressed by your professionalism and kind gestures uh, to your students and your clients and everyone here in the YouTube community. That's pretty nice. Over the course of the past year, I've seen your channel grow and develop, and your editing skills have gotten to be really good. Eh, eh, sure. Um, over the past two weeks, I've noticed a trend in your videos, and I wanted to let you be aware of it. Okay. I've noticed that your videos are have an excellent ending, an excellent beginning, and excellent middle. You've really changed the format of how you shoot videos, and you've changed the format of how you're showing videos, and your channel will go to the next level within the next couple of months. That's the goal. I hope so. Over the past year, you've also become much healthier and interactive with your students here on YouTube. I've noticed that your energy level seems to be much better than it was when you first started your YouTube channel. Is there a reason why you seemed kind of droopy in the beginning and now uh, you have so much more energy and wit about you when you do your live chats? Just wondering, concerned pet parent, see you soon, hopefully. I will be at Global Pet Expo. If you want to come meet me, please feel free to reach out at the, I don't want to say her name, um, and I will gladly, I actually responded back to her and, uh, Debbie is super sweet. And yes, um, Debbie, I don't know if you knew, um, I was very sick. That's why this whole channel started. Uh, when we first started the YouTube channel, um, I had a crazy disease. And so that's why I started this was so I can still reach out to my customers and my clients. That was the whole purpose of this kind of developing. Um, so, you know, I, I, I totally admit you're right. When I first started this a year ago, cause it's been over a little bit over a year. Um, when I started this over a year ago, I really wasn't healthy. Um, I was a little bit fatter. <laughs> I was, um, taking a lot of medicine and I was really tired all the time. And I know Sharice, who's been here since the beginning, Erica has been here for a while. Um, you know, and a few of the others that, that have been around, uh, Heather, who's not here tonight. Um, but there's a few of them that have been around since we started this, since the inception of the dog training channel. And they will uh, say the same thing that I agree with you. You know, the whole point of this one was for me to be able to have an outlet to talk to you guys. Um, two, I didn't know I was going to enjoy doing this so much as I do. And three, um, I am trying to get better. You know, I want to be better for you guys. And I feel that, that this is a fantastic outlet 
for me to be able to help and coach more people other than in the Orlando area, you know, because that's where I'm based out of. Um, thank you so much for all the, the kind words. You know, it's 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 great to see that people can see the development. Um, so, yeah, Debbie's awesome. I, I actually reached out to her and we talked the other day on the phone. She's going to be coming out here for Global. So I will be doing an interview with her um, because she is a trainer with one of the big box stores. And she's going to be coming with one of the companies uh, involved in that. So that's super, super cool. Um, yeah, very cool. I just ate an ice cube. So anyway, wow, I'm cold. <laughs> so I hope you guys, you know, do you guys have any questions for me? I did have a question today that I got from someone. And I'm going to uh, pull my phone up here. Um, where was that question? That was from somebody and her dog. Basically what she says is hello there. It's been a while. Um, what, at what point would you think my dog, which she has a Dalmatian mix, um, at what point do you think my dog would have gotten or generated separation anxiety? Um, basically is what she's claiming. Uh, her dog is now, um, she was kennel trained and the dog literally destroyed the kennel, if you can see there. And there's another picture there. So yeah, that was pretty bad. And it's all zip tied up and, and everything. And you know, for that pet parent, you know, there's two, two sides of that story. Uh, and I asked her, I said, has any dogs moved into your neighborhood? You know, cause she did just move to this new location probably about three or four months ago in early December. And she told me that there was a new pet parent that moved in across the hallway that their dogs bark constantly at the, um, at anybody that walks by. So, I'm assuming that probably the dog is being reactive to those barks. Two, I would definitely think about upgraded to an ultra kennel, which is a little bit thicker gauge metal. And then they put them a little closer. So there's more of them. Um, when you're looking at a kennel, you know, you have the, the rails that go around and the cross beams. They kind of put more of them so it's more compact. So it's it's a higher grade steel and it's a little bit more industrial looking. And what ends up happening is it makes it so you can kind of get a better, uh, your dog can't really get out. Your dog can't chew it up. They can't get their mouth in there because their snout can't fit through the holes, you know? So I would definitely, and she mentioned something about getting a plastic kennel, one of the travel kennels. And I would say no to that. And the reason why I would say no is because I personally feel that those are designed for isolation and they're really not going to help your dog in a time of anxiety. I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in on this in the chat, but I think that that if you have a regular kennel and a dog's used to being in a reg regular kennel, that's where they should be. And we just need to help them. Um, no, don't. I don't know what that means. Uh, so... Agree more enclosed. So Rachel says she agrees it should be more enclosed. Um, enclosed as being, I, I wouldn't want to close the dog off because if you, yeah, if you close them off, so now you're taking a kennel that's usually open and now the dog can't see anything through the sides, right? So then they get that isolation and then they actually can chew the inside of that. And that's really hard, hard plastic. Um, so I tend to, I, I, my personal feeling is that would add more anxiety in this situation. Uh, travel kennels are basically just for travel. Um, you know, so I would probably just use a higher grade metal and then maybe get a wrap around the kennel. Um, which I think that's something that Sharice uses is she uses a a crate cover for each of her crates for the three dogs in her house, um, which works fantastically.
Yeah, Rachel, you're right. Um, the if you use a travel crate uh, as a permanent crate over the course of time, they can scratch up the crate, and that could develop some sort of issues cleanly wise. You have to really get in there and clean it once or twice a week, different from the you know the tray ones. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of. Eh. I'm kind of at a, at, a, at a stuck between two the land of two worlds here. I feel that for the dog's safety, is it better to get a travel crate versus a regular crate? No, not so much. Um, I would probably want to videotape and find out what the dog is doing while I'm not home. I want to find out what what's causing the issue and then try to resolve the issue. Maybe if it's the barking of the dogs next door, put the TV on so this way the dog can't hear the barking. Maybe that would be the resolve, the resolution for that. Uh, yeah. So what do you think? I don't know. That's a good one. That is a good one. So um, in a final note, I am going to start to do games on here. So, um, yep, set up a camera. So what I'm going to do is at 15 minutes next week into the live chat, I am going to invite someone into this session and we're going to do an answer question, a true or false. And I'm going to give you, it's going to be live and you're going to have to make a true or false little sign. And we're going to ask questions and you're going to have to answer true or false or yes or no. And the winner of our questions will win a prize uh so we're going to test this out next week um so i'm probably going to pick two of you um to join us who probably come every single week and uh so we're going to do that next week and then we'll do this officially the week after um oh wait that's global week so that would be the week of the 19th which happens to be my birthday um, so if anyone wants to send me birthday presents, I'm more than happy to accept them. Um, the 13th, no, it's the 20, the 19th and 20th is birthday week. So Adam's birthday is on the 19th of March. So I will not, oh, so we'll do it on the 20th. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see how that goes with global. So yeah, we'll try to do this. And, um, all I need from you guys would be an email address. Don't do, but don't put anything in the chat right now. Um, and then I can add you to the live feed here, and you can be in the live feed. I'll mute your mic so you don't have to say anything. All you would do is just hold a, uh, a red that says yes, uh, white that says no, blah, 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 blah. Kind of have that same thing, and then we'll go from there, see how it goes. I just want to see if we can get more people involved here. Um, I think that would be fun. And we'll do, like, topics. And, yeah, I think that'd be cool. What do you guys think? I think so. So um, let me know in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. And I will see you guys next week. Remember, if this is your first time watching, smash the subscribe button you see down there. Also, don't forget, Friday we'll be doing a, um, I drop a video every Friday, 10 a.m. It does it every single week. Um, go back and check out the last video I did. You'll see that at the end here. You should see that right up there. And I'll see you guys next time. Deuces.